that I call the propitiator of our sins. And that's the reason why I made this message. Let's read a few verses and then I'm going to continue. Philippians chapter 3. The book of Philippians chapter 3. The Bible says, and I'm going to read from verse number number 4. It said, though I myself have reason for such confidence, if someone else think they have reason to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Verse 5. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the Lord, a Pharisee. As for the zeal persecuting the church, as for the righteousness based on the law, faultless. Look at verse 7. But whatever we were gained to me, I now consider it as a loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything as a loss because of surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I began Christ. I want that to be a prayer for someone this morning. I consider everything a garbage. But as long as I win Christ. Can you say it with me, somebody? I consider everything as only the kid is saying get me well. I consider it as as long as I have. Can you do it again? I consider everything as as long as I have. Oh, glory to God. I love what Paul is saying here. He's continuing. He said, and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own, that comes from the law, but that which is true faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of Christ. And so the title of my message or the subtitle, I call it not having a righteousness of my own. By the righteousness of Christ. I'm going to suggest another verse. First John chapter 2 verse 2. I don't know why we didn't stand up today. We always stand up to honor the word of God. Are we tired? <laughs> Amen. It's just to honor our Jesus and the word of the Lord. Praise God. First John 2 verse 2. If you can, then please just stand up for one minute. And then you'll sit down. First John chapter 2 verse 2. I'm waiting for you. When you say amen, we are going to read. Amen. And every God bless you. <laughs> the Bible says, and he is the propitiation of for our sins, and not for our ours only, but also the sins of the whole world. Amen. Amen. So for the PowerPoint, just leave it like that for today. Amen. For those who are at the meeting, just leave it because that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Please sit down. So, based on the testimony I gave you this morning, I got this verse in 1 John that says uh, that Christ is the propitiation for our sins. And I did some research. Amen? I did some research. When you go to Wikipedia, they talk about the space shuttles, you know, the shuttles that goes to space. They have... Uh, a certain protection system. Amen? It's called the barrier. It's called the space internal protection system. That means if, you know, it requires a lot of heat for the shadow to go into the space. Are you following me, church? And if you see it on TV, when it takes off and goes into the space, it's a lot of fire. Sometimes, the temperature can go higher almost to reach 1,650 Celsius degree. Can you imagine? That when you cook your fufu, or I don't know how you call it, pandu, right? In Nigeria we call it pandu. In Congo we call it fufu. Can you imagine Mama Saza in Zimbabwe, right? I'm trying to die. Eh? It's Saza. And I'm coming. <laughs> I didn't forget. For you to make fufu, Water must reach at least 100 degree, right? To touch it, burns you completely. 100 degree. Now imagine the temperature reaching over 1600 Celsius degree. Amen? I think it's even harder than, uh, than the furnace where 
Shak, Shadrach, and Abednego were thrown in. It's a super duper heart. And sometimes those shadows become hard. And imagine they have people in the space. But the scientists have developed a certain protection system. Amen? That cool down. That heat. It doesn't matter how the heat becomes. That system is called the pre propitiator. It's there to cool down that heat. Now I'll bring you back to the Bible. The Bible says, and Jesus, hallelujah, he's the propitiation for our sin. And for not ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Sometimes we go through fire. I was thinking to you about things that sometimes bother my spirit. It's a form of fire. Sometimes we go to situations as pastors that you people don't know. It is fire in our space. But I have a good news for someone this morning. We have that Lord of glory. He's the propitiation for our sins. He's the one who is our protection cooling system. That when we feel the fire, the heat, that can burn the spirits, the soul, the mind, Jesus comes and cools us down. Oh, I pray in the name of Jesus that Jesus become the cooling system of your life. Oh, shout hallelujah, praise God. Sometimes we feel the heat of marriage. You feel the heat of in finances. One of the people in this Canada I found out that give too much heat to people is immigration. If you've been to immigration system and you're waiting for your papers, my brothers and sisters, that's about 2,000 degrees Celsius. <laughs> You know why? Because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You are not even sure of what is going on right now. Are you with me, somebody? They're talking to those judges and sometimes they're looking at you. They're like, uh-huh, what's your name? And you give your name. My name is so-and-so. And they look at you. They say, uh, I hold are you? And you give your age. And they bring your picture. They take the passport. They say, this man in the passport is not this man. Sometimes... One time I'm, uh, I'm in Zimbabwe, I'm trying to go to UK, and uh, I have my passport, and I got to this <laughs> immigration agent, I was very angry. He said, uh, I, like, I see your visa, it, it, it's genuine, but the picture, the picture, and you said, don't match. I said, man, well, if this picture is not mine, that means it's yours. <laughs> I was so angry. <laughs> Sometimes they hit to make you say things because we are human. Immigration can hit you. But we do have a high priest. The propitiation for our sins. Not only ours, but for the whole world. His name is your way maker. Somebody say he's my way maker. Or he's the one who knows your future and your tomorrow. It doesn't matter what the judge is planning. You do have a propitiation for your sins. Not only for your sins, but also for your life. Give me a great hallelujah. Our protection cooling system. The king of kings. The lord of lords. I saw some people in life. When we feel the heat. We want to bring our own solution. We want to help God. In the book of Genesis chapter 3. God created Adam and him. The Bible says in Genesis 5, he created them male and female and he called them Adam. So first of all, there's no male or female in heaven. We are all, somebody say Adam. <laughs> are you with me? He created male and female and he called them what? Check your Bible, Genesis 5 verse 1. Pastor Chris, read it for us. Because it's like people are doubting. In heaven, Brother Peter, there's no sister Bridget or Brother Peter. There is Adam. There's a spirit called Adam. That means before the Lord, he looked at us the same way. He can use Amanda the same way he can use Brother Angel here. Because we have one spirit. You understand what I'm trying to say? So he blessed them. You find Genesis 5 verse 1. You don't need to stand up. Just read. Amen. The Christians of Berean, the Berean Christians... We're known for checking the scriptures. This is a book of the gene genealogy of Adam. Mm -hmm. In the day that God created man, uh -huh. he made him uh -huh. in, the, in the likeness of God. Hallelujah. Continue. He created them male and female. 
male and female. And he called them? He blessed them and called them mankind. Uh -huh. In another version, he says Adam. You have, you have them Adam there, right? I don't know this version. It needs some deliverance. <laughs> Over there, he's talking about Adam. What's the? This is NIV? Amplified? Okay. So in the presence of God, we are a spirit. But then, that leads me to my message that in Genesis 3, Eve ate the fruit. I went to see Adam. They shared the fruit. And then the Bible says, they covered themselves with fig leaves. Amen? And when God was looking for Adam, he was going to the garden and shouting, Adam! Adam! Actually, he was looking for both of them. And Adam eventually was found by God. And God said, where are you, Adam? And Adam was hiding himself. And the Lord said, why are you hiding? He said, because I am naked. And the Lord said, who told you that you are naked? Did you eat of the fruit? And the Bible says, Adam was covered with fig leaves. Fig leaves represent solutions that sometimes we try to bring to help God. They are called temporary solutions. In the presence of God, fig leaves represent temporary solutions. Why? Because every leaf can dry. Are you with me, somebody? They represent things that you want to do to impress God. Fig leaves are, 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 are what I call uh, the limited solution. They are for a short term. Amen? Even in this world, technology evolve every day. If you buy a car of 2015, back then when you bought it, it was really trendy. But right now we have cars with satellite, cars that have a lot of security control, cameras every day, because things that men do, they are temporary. Are you with me, somebody? Solution that we can try to do to impress ourselves for God, they are just for a short moment. Fig leaves of Adam, that's how I call them. We try to do things to impress God. When you come in the house of God, what do you come to do? Are you coming to impress God? Or are you coming just the way you are? So that the propitiation, the propitiator can take care of you just the way you are. When you come to sin, do you think that God cares about your gifts? Do you really think that God cares about whatever you carry? God cares about your heart. Because at some point, you can lose your voice, mama. But if you sing, God will still listen to your worship. It doesn't matter how bad is your voice. If you just do it from your heart, he can listen to you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Some people look at their money and they think that money is everything. It's okay to be blessed. But listen to me. There are some things in your life that paycheck will not resolve, my sister. There are some sickness. Even if you have one million dollars, you want to pay so that you can be cured. You won't be cured. Because even money is temporal. I call them Adam fig leaves. They can do certain things. But there's a place where the, the, the only God, the propitiator of our sins, must rise up in our life and give validation to whatever we are doing. That's why when you serve God, serve Him with your heart. When you come to church, come with your heart. When you sing in the choir, choir members, sing with your heart. Are you with me, somebody? Sing with your heart. You don't need Pastor Silver to stand up here and start giving you new songs. You have a new song, text Sister Nikita. Ask her, I text the songs at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. Why? Because I do it from my heart. I'm like, Lord, if this can bless me when I'm alone, that can bless the church when we are together. And I said, I don't want to forget it. I record it, I share it, because when you do something with your heart, you will touch the heart of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody, are you receiving something here today? And so I want to go to what I'm going to call certain rules. Certain rules that are rules of the righteousness of God. And today, I want to use uh, a verse here, first of all, before I move to the next topic, Paul was saying, and I will read it, I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. You see, when you come in the house of God, your number one focus should be to gain who? Christ. 
Say with me, Christ. Christ. Amen. Don't text in the presence of God. Don't be absent-minded. Some time ago, our brother was fixing us. You can do it now. This, the presence of God is here. Do it before. What you show as honor in the presence of God is what also the honor God will give you back. Whatever you do in the house of God, do it to gain Christ. Not to be famous. Remember what I told you at the beginning of my message? Don't preach because you want to be famous. Don't preach for those who are preachers. Amen? Like Brother Peter was telling me, I want to become a... <laughs> I always like to tease him a lot. I say, you are the next pastor. He said, no pastor. But he's a lion on the evangelism. He's always, you know, he, he has it in him. My sister Bridget, he has it in him. He's refusing it, but he has it so strong. And I prophesied on you in Jesus' name. <laughs> when you do it, do it. So that you don't gain anything but gain Christ. Brother Julian, we gain Christ. He said, everything else is garbage. Verse 9, and found in him not having any righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but which is through faith in Christ. And that's what I call the perfect righteousness, the righteousness of God. Let me tell you a few things about what the righteousness of God can do. Let's look at the man, for instance, David. Somebody say David. David. Come on, say David. Number one, if you look at David, this man was a shepherd. When we talk about a shepherd, we see somebody who was smelling because his time was with the sheep. Amen? He was kind of rejected because his brothers were militaries. They had a certain statue in the army of Saul. But David was alone, kind of rejected. But when the righteousness of God came for him, things that he didn't deserve start locating him. Amen. The Bible says, number one, the anointing met him first of all in the bush. Hallelujah. The righteousness of God will locate you where you are, just how you are. Maybe you are also smelling like David, but the Lord is saying, you are mine. I, I, hallelujah. The Lord has printed on you. He said, you are mine. And he came and sent Samuel to anoint him. Number two, David, listen, people always say that, that oh hallelujah, Goliath came to kill David. Or rather, let me say it in the proper way. Goliath, I'm going to call him the platform that God used to reveal David. What you think is going to kill you, God can use you. To reveal me to the public. Oh, did I talk to somebody? Else? What you think is going to finish you is what God wants to use but to showcase everything you have. In the Sunday school, we were told that David was sent by God to kill Goliath. But when I grew up, I came to understand but that God sent Goliath to, kill, uh, to, to showcase David. To reveal David, the shepherd boy, the rejected boy. When the righteousness of God comes upon your life, it can come even in the ways that you don't expect. But don't run away because God is just about to reveal you to the world. They say, hey, look at the discipline of this man. Look at the, the, the consecration of this pastor. Look at how this man can endure even through fire. That propitiation for our sins is the righteousness of God upon our life. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Goliath is coming to show your quality, mama, not your anointing. You see, with the anointing that David had, he was not known into the palace. But until Goliath was killed, then Saul said, whose son is this one? Why? Because he had the anointing. But the anointing was enough. It needed some kind of adversity. It needed some kind of negative weight. And I give glory to God. I was telling Brother Peter, when we were evangelizing, I feel that there's a negative weight coming to the church since the month of January. Because we walk out, we are fasting, we are praying, we are on the road, we are preaching, we share the fire, we are doing whatever we can. But I see that there's a different weight. Yes, 
yesterday when I was reading the scripture, I came to realize that God is about to manifest his power into this church. The problem is don't run away from Goliath. Face Goliath. Cut his head. And there will be somebody who's going to ask, whose son is this? What is that church? Who is that pastor? Who is that present worship leader? Who is that brother? Who is that sister? Somebody shout that. Now that 
that you are the righteousness of God. Whatever you ask to my Father, you shall have it in my name. Yes. Let me say it again. When you come in the presence of God, when you come in, in the presence of God and you are in the covenant with God, when you appear before the Father, Sister Francesca, God does not see Francesca. He sees Jesus. That's why Jesus said, when you pray, pray to the Father in my name. Why? Because it's not only about what you are saying. It's what Jesus did on the cross. That's what the Bible calls the righteousness of God. That whatever you need right now is in Jesus. That when you come in the presence of God, you can now be bold. Boldly. Say, now you can come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain grace and mercy that will sustain you in the time of need. Why? Because you are coming in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus, I am the righteousness of God. And so, there's a story of a man here called David and another one called Jonathan. These two people had two different pedigrees. Amen. They have a two different pedigree. One was coming from a poor family. He was not even worthy to appear in the palace of the king. Just like we were not worthy to appear for the presence of the Father. Amen. But the Bible says that Jonathan loved David so much and they had a covenant. Just like Jesus has loved us so much, now that we have a covenant, we can appear presence of the Father. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Matthew 27 verse 31 is saying, after they have mocked Jesus, they strip him of the robe and put it on, on him. Amen. And look at this. The first thing that Jonathan did, the Bible says, he looked at David and he did what? He removed his robe. And put it on David. They made an exchange. So number one, there is no covenant without exchange. They were supposed to do an exchange. Somebody was wearing a shepherd's robe that smelled pee and the smell of uh, the bush. But somebody also was wearing a royal garment. But now, the Lord has already exposed David to royalty. But before David became a king, God made him a prince. You, you get this, somebody? Because Jonathan was a prince. But David was a shepherd. But David was called to become the king of Israel. But he couldn't become the king without being in a covenant with the royal priesthood. And so Jonathan needed to remove his royal garment. And put it on David. So that David the shepherd can become the priest. And he can take his place. I have to tell somebody. That when Jesus Christ will come for the church. When will be raptured. When you will be in the presence of Adonai. When we stand before the judgment seat of the Lord. number 10. He said they were given a rod that we can call the priest before the presence of our king. That we can become like Jesus before the presence of God the Father. And that's what Jonathan did to the covenant. Somebody shout hallelujah. They exchanged the rod. They exchanged the rod. And the rod just means the glory. The robe just signified the glory that was on Jonathan. I just want you to know that this morning, that there's a glory that is coming. And that glory, it will locate you because you are being chosen. He said, ye are the royal priesthood. Ye are the chosen generation. You have been called to show forth the glory of the Lord that has called you to the glory of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. The robe represents the glory, the dignity, the respect, the honor of Jonathan. 
Oh, I feel the joy of the Lord in my spirit this morning. Oh, Rabba Shande Negosi Alabashia. Thank you, Father, for what you did for us. So, number two, the Bible says the covenant of God brings the glory of God. We talk about it. Number two, it brings the favor of God. Look at this. Look at this. Jonathan became one spirit with David. Did you see that? And the Bible says he loved David like himself. Touch your never say God loves you. And he will send somebody to love you. Remember, David was a shepherd. But he's now in the palace. And the palace doesn't fit him. His clothes doesn't fit the parts. His pedigree, even, you know, uh, you, you need to understand one thing. When you read the book of Matthew, for the Jews, there is a lot of consideration when they know who is your father, who is your fourth father. That's why you will see every time in the gospel or even the chronicle, you will see they say, Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob be guy, Joseph, and so and so and so and so, all the way to Jesus. Because in the Jewish culture, where you are coming from is very important. I don't know about the island, but in Africa it's the same. You know, you can go to a place and you say, I am the son of so and so. Ah, we know him. Go. Why? Because of your pedigree. You understand me? Even Paul, when he was talking, he said, let me, let me show you what Paul was saying here. Do you, do you like the teachings I'm trying to, to give you the best food? We call it, Pastor Chris, the filet mignon. Hallelujah. This is good food I'm giving you. Somebody say, we love you, Pastor. I am not convinced with your love. Say, we love you, Pastor. We love you, Pastor. Ah, now let me preach. Look at this. Paul was bragging from where he came from. He said this. He said this. Look at this. If someone else thinks they have reason to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Now he started with many of them. He said, circumcised of the eight days of the people of Israel. He said, I am from the tribe of the Benjamin because that tribe was begotten kings in Israel. He said, a Hebrew of Hebrews is giving his pedigree in regard to the law and Pharisees. Pharisees were doctors of the law, by the way. Pharisees were memorizing the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses. In fact, what they did in the public place, they would begin to quote the fact I was a Pharisee. And then he said, as for the zeal, I persecute the church. That's a very bad one. <laughs> and then he said, as for the righteousness based on the law, I was faultless. You see, he was bragging about where he's coming from, what he has achieved, and then at the end he said, I count all as garbage. All I need, I want to be having Jesus in me. So, the same thing here happened to David. David had a very poor pedigree. He did not fit. But the Bible says, Jonathan loved him like himself. Somebody say, the next season. The next season. Love me. I didn't get it. Mama, the next season that is coming loves you. I want to repeat again. Say the next season of your life. You may not fit it. Are you listening to me? You may not deserve to be called a prince, but the Lord is in the next season of your life. Loves you. Jonathan was the next season of David. Without Jonathan, listen, and the funny thing is, even the clothes of Jonathan miraculously fit David. Did you see that? He dressed him in his robe and it fit David automatically. That means that God, hallelujah, what, what God has prepared for you, someone has it. Pastor Chris, what we are looking for, God has already created it. Oh, it is the next season. Catch the scissor and go and take what belongs to you. Yes. God has already prepared a robe for David. The Bible says, Ibo Rashad de Negosia. He has a belt he gave him. And the belt means the offspring, right? Because this represents your lungs. The baby comes from this area. It's your offspring. 
And then the Bible says they also exchange the sword. The sword represents the power, the strength. He said that I'll protect you, protect me. If somebody wants to kill your children, kill them. That's the same covenant that we have with God. The Bible says, hallelujah, all weapon fashioned against you shall not prosper. Why? Because when you are in a covenant, your enemy become the enemies of God. Those who are seeking for your demise, they are facing God. Because you are in a covenant with God. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says something powerful. That, oh, glory to God. That he gave him the lungs. I mean, the, the, the belt. And they exchanged the belt. The belt means that, David, you are going to protect my children. If I die before you, you can protect my children. If you, you, if you, if, if you die before me, I'm going to protect your children. And that's why when a guy who was crippled, the Bible calls him Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was one of the sons of Jonathan. The Bible says when Jonathan died, God told David to kill all the children of the house of Saul. But because of a covenant, when he met and he spent one son that belonged to Jonathan, his name was Mephibosheth. He gave him. And the Bible says he called Mephibosheth. He sat my people sat on the same table with you. The Bible says that I will set a table before your enemies and my cup shall overflow on your life. What I want you to know is that the covenant protects not only you, but your children, your generation to come, your third generation, your fourth generation. God is the God of covenant. Somebody shout glory to God. The rules of the covenant. And that's why Jesus is the propitiation of our sin. Because when the world wants to burn you, when the laws of this world want to kill you, he shows up and says, I pay the price. I pay the price for you, Tana. I pay the price. It doesn't matter if you're coming from a family where people die at 40. When it's your case, that I'll say, Where is the son of Jonathan? Ah, instead of dying, you are going to sit on the king's table. Is it not powerful, Brother Peter? That when you are supposed to die at 45, they know that you don't get married in your family. But when it comes to you, everything changes. And your next season called love, he said, I'm waiting for you. And Jonathan loved David. It's next season. Somebody said, my next season loves me. Sing out, my next season loves me. Can I continue for two, three minutes? Can I continue for two, three minutes? I love that, brother. Hallelujah. There's something powerful that the Bible says there. It says that David, every battle he was doing and everything he was doing, he was successful. And then the Bible adds one more thing. He says that David was accepted. With all, all the generals, with all, everybody, they were accepting him. Church, there are places you go, you are rejected. <laughs> you come with whatever you have, but you don't feel the love. Sometimes people come into church and they say, I don't feel like I'm accepted. And they run away from the church. But the Bible says, David was accepted. Do you know the meaning of that? That when you are in a covenant with God, there is what is triggered. It's called the favor of God. The favor of God. That's why be in the presence of the Lord. You have no idea what you are doing to yourself. When you are in the presence of the Lord, there is a favor that comes in your life. That you come into Canada and everybody is wondering, how to succeed, how to move forward. But for you, in less than three years, you have a house, you have a car, you have a business, you have a church, you, you everything seems to be working. It is called the favor of God, Amanda. Amen. I decree in the name of Jesus amen. that the Lord shall favor you. Amen. Oh, I didn't hear you. Amen. amen. I said, I prophesy in the name of Jesus amen. that the favor of the Lord amen. shall follow you. All the days of your life, the Lord shall bless you, and you shall not be followed with no sorrow. Somebody shout hallelujah. And then the Bible says that David jumped into his season. Whatever he was doing, he was successful. One thing that David knew what, how to do 
was to fight. He was ready. Always be ready. He was ready. He knew how to kill a bear. He knew how to kill a lion. And when they brought militaries, he didn't have the experience. He didn't have, he didn't even know how to use the sword. But if you look at the Bible, you're going to see that the same David who could not use the sword of Saul to kill Goliath was able to lift up the sword of Jonathan because of the covenant. Do you know what that means? That there are times where you can't do anything by your own. But when God comes in your life, your fight becomes his fight. You may not be a soldier, but just because he's with you, your battle becomes his battle. What you go through becomes your battle. Somebody say hallelujah. And people start chanting women. David had killed 10,000. Saul had killed 1,000. And the Bible says Saul was gravely angry. Every time when you succeed, haters are coming. Are you with me, somebody? Every time when God wants to lift you up, don't worry. If you remain 10 people in this place, things will be okay. It's going to happen in the name of Jesus. We have put the acceleration on evangelism. This church shall be packed in the name of Jesus. Amen. April 17th. And people sit on Facebook and Twitter. You know what? Some people will begin to say, hmm, is really God there? Why? Because every victory attracts the enemy. Saul has killed thousands. David has killed 10,000. And a king who was supposed to protect David, the Bible says, who tells if people are saying he killed 10,000 and I killed 1,000, that means next is taking the kingdom. Guess what? He was prophesying on David without knowing. Oh, I pray that whatever your enemies are saying against Israel, because the fear of the enemy became the answer of your prayers. What your enemies don't want you to become, that's what God is planning for you. Just need, don't run away from the adversity. Face them. Believe that who is in you is greater than who is in this world. You will have that victory in the name of Jesus. His name is the propitiation of your sins. He is there, the cooling system of your fire. Somebody say praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He said it's not by my, but you know, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Who are you, O oh, great mountain before the river bear? The Lord shall place you to nothing. Oh, every mountain in front of you shall be leveled out in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the Lord is saying it's not by your power, nor by your mind, but there is the propitiation of your sin. His name is the lily of the valley. I like when the Bible calls it the rock of ages. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the mighty one of Israel. His name is Emmanuel. That means God is with you. Oh, hallelujah. He is the rock of ages. He rose from the third day. And Job called him my redeemer. He shall rise up at the later position. Shout hallelujah as we spend up in his praises and give him a mighty hand clap. Oh, Rabbi Shai, Rabbi Rabbi that propitiation of our sin. So I am in the covenant with the Lord of Lord. You are in the covenant with Jesus Christ. That sickness will not finish you. Doesn't matter if that curse has been placed on your family, it will stop on you. Because you are not like them. And the Lord is giving me a word to someone here. He said, don't give up. Yes. I don't know if you are in church here or you are following us online. Amen. Saying, don't quit. Amen. Don't quit. Don't quit. Just like Angel said, you have made a neighbor. You have no idea how you are precious in his praises. Do not quit. Do not quit. Lift up your hands wherever you are. Begin to give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. If the Lord brought you in this country, Canada, it's for a reason. Don't be afraid of the Goliath. The Lord just wants to expose you to your new season. A new season. A new season. A new season. 
and you sit down. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. Lift up. So we lift our holy hands in one accord. Sing it. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Oh, blessed be the name. Nothing. There is nothing. There is nothing. 